Each and every match in the Guinness Six Nations has its own unique history, but none is more colourful than that between these two teams. Eddie Jones, never one to miss a chance to throw in a barb, cranked up the rhetoric this week with a bit of pugilistic verbal sparring. The England coach says his team owe Wales one. This, though, is an annual contest that needs no artificial sales pitch. It's England against Wales in rugby's greatest championship. Well, welcome to Twickenham. I'm Martin Gillingham alongside me, a man who's been through all of this as a player. He's also a Welshman who's walked away from the home of English rugby as a winner. Good afternoon, Tom Shanklin. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. What an occasion here. The noise is absolutely deafening. Needs a big, big performance now from this Welsh team to try and get themselves back on a winning track. But England just seem in a great place right now. You. You discount that first game against France where it didn't quite work out. And you look at the two results against Scotland and especially against Ireland. The power this England team possess up front is very, very worrying if you're Welsh. So the Prime Minister in attendance, and this is who he will be watching. Both team selections share a common theme, with players making their first test appearances since the World Cup. For England, Mark Wilson starts, despite having played just a couple of hours for his club since recovering from knee surgery. Joe Marler continues at loose head in what is an unchanged front five. Elliot Daly remains at fullback despite George Furbank being fit again. That means there's room for Anthony Watson to come straight into the starting lineup on the wing. His calf problem has cleared up. Ben Youngs earns his 99th cap. Well, Wayne Pivak is spoiled for choice in some positions and taking calculated risks in others. Josh Navidi is over his hamstring problem and makes his first appearance of the championship. At loose head, Rob Evans is back in favour. Dan Vega, pass fit despite what first appeared to be a horrible knee injury.
playing for Northampton last weekend. Liam Williams appears for the first time in four months. George North has also passed his post-concussion tests. Let's look at the replacements. Ellis Genge and Ben Earl among Eddie Jones' more explosive finishers. For Wales, Talupi Falatel drops to the bench. Well, Tom, I guess Navidi for Falatel in the back row. What do we read into that? Difficult to read into that one. Toby Falatel, a world-class player, but Josh Navidi, and Falatel has been quite quiet in the last couple of games. Josh Navidi, I think, has been the find of the last 18 months. Not the biggest guy physically, but boy, can he carry. He's aggressive in the tackle, he's aggressive at the breakdown. And if you want to try and take this English team apart, the breakdown is where it's going to happen. And look, there's not many better than Josh Navidi. Ben O'Keefe, the New Zealand referee, the second match he's taken charge of at headquarters. The other one, England-Australia from three years ago. And England-Wales International, filling its perennial role as the focal point of the rugby world. Uniquely today, at least in this corner of the globe, providing a timely distraction from the trials, troubles and concerns that are now just about everywhere else around us. Well, we've had the hand sanitizers as you come through the gates here at Twickenham. We've got plenty of posters up from the World Health Organization. Everything the Six Nations is doing to ensure that everybody here is in good health. We can now focus on what promised to be one of the great classics, and there, an uncompromising hit on Dan Bigger. And I guess, Tom, that was as predictable as it comes. That was br brutal hit there, but the kick was just perfect by Ben Youngs. So good to see Liam Williams back. His first competitive outing since the quarter-final at the World Cup. That was Rob Evans. He starts a test match for Wales for the first time since last year's championship. Rather fell out of favour with Warren Gatlin. Didn't go to the World Cup. Thomas Williams hoists it high. An early test for Elliot Daly, passed with flying colours. Well, Ben Young's forced to delay the pass there. It was well dealt with by England. Well, we talk about this, about this, it's something of a rugby cliche, but the early skirmishes, so important here. Well, Maruatoji just controlling that with the fingertips. There's George Ford on to Daly. Early chance to run, not much of one for Johnny May. That is the halfway line. Bigger. Oh, not only did he take that wonderfully well, but he was quickly off the right foot as well. There will inevitably be scrutiny of that right knee, which you can see is heavily bandaged. I was at Franklin's Gardens last week, and I must say, it seemed the moment he'd come down and hyperextended that right leg, it seemed inevitable that he wouldn't be here. It really is the, the miracle of modern physiotherapy. Yeah. You know, you're right with, with that injury. It did look bad, but look, this is a clear tactic at the moment from England. Two kicks have been put up on Dan Bigger, and because you're a 10, you often find yourself in that position of fielding kicks. And look, that kick was just right on the button by Ben Youngs. Just gives Tuolangi, Tom Curry, something to chase, something to hit. But, you know, on the flip side, they do not come much tougher than that man there. You know, he will take contact, he will take hits time and time again and get back up from them well he appeared to be sending some signals there i couldn't read the uh, semaphore could you i think he needed a drink <laughs> he's had two massive hits he needs a little bit of water but we talked about you know this england power but if there's one game you know as a welshman you can get up for it's against england it's at twickenham you know you pin yourself against what is perceived to be the best Certainly the best paid, anyway. Well, that's untidy. It's been won by Wales. Thomas Williams, it was Moriarty who was through very quickly on it. 
Well, it's then been spilt. England now have it. Curry there on to Atoji. Atoji shows it. Just driving through the midfield. Here's Watson. The step just getting past Williams and then Justin Tipperick doing what he does so well. Wales fumbling the ball. It's been a bit of an issue, really. You can see George North doesn't quite grab it. He's looking up to see what's in front, and rightly so, with Manu to along there. But it all comes from an England line that's turned over, and as you can see, it's just off the cuff. Damn big, and there really fires it into George North. It doesn't have much an option, but really well into link play there. And Atoji does so well, not to throw a 50-50. There's Curry. The inside ball to Watson. Watson! The fourth minute, and Anthony Watson, his first appearance in the Six Nations this season. And what a step that was. The perfect start for the men in white. Huge start there for England. Anthony Watson straight back in. As you can see, comes from the line out. It's sort of a dummy drive, isn't it? And then there's a bit of movement into Lincoln play. Watson is just, I think, able to hide behind Ben Youngs. And great footwork there to get on the outside of Thomas Williams. And the leg drive and the power to get over. It's you almost know. like a double step because Williams was anticipating the step off the right foot. He almost dummied it, didn't he? Completely. The double goose step gone away. And, you know, there was a... An argument that Jonathan Joseph had a really good game last week on the wing and whether or not Anthony Watson should come back in, I think he's proved everyone why. But really good decoy angles there from the England team off that line-out. If we see it again in a replay, you'll, you'll be able to see where Anthony Watson can just hide, just out of vision. Well, in Anthony Watson's England life, the World Cup final was just five minutes ago. What a way to bounce back for him. And Owen Farrell makes it a seven-pointer and becomes just the second Englishman to go through 900 points in Test Rugby. No prizes for guessing who the first man was there. He's here today, a certain Jay Wilkinson. Here's Tom Curry. Certainly an interesting selection here with Mark Wilson, who we've seen play plenty of club rugby at six and eight. Eddie Jones having no issues with putting Severon on his back here. Another very good box kick there from Ben Youngs. Kicking has been on point so far in this opening. Six minutes, look at that. Gives Johnny May something to chase out, something to get off the ground for. And that's what you want from your wingers as well. You know, if the, if the box kick is there, you need to get off the ground, you need to make an attempt, just get something in the way. I'd be slightly worrying from Wayne Pivak and his team there to take such an early lead. And it's all come, and it all came from a Wales mistake. You know, they won the ball on the half meter, on the halfway line. George North knocks it on, and then all of a sudden, then England attack. Well, this certainly looks rather concerning for Johnny May. For Wayne Pivak, well, he's lost two of his first three test matches. He did take charge of the Barbarians match, didn't he, just after the, the World Cup. I guess one or two alarm bells ringing for him, but the one thing about playing England, Tom, is that a win against England can pretty much rescue any situation for Welshman. Yeah, you know, especially if you're, if you're talking about winning at Twickenham. But, you know, he's come into it. The Welsh team head coach, you know, he has a different philosophy on how he wants to play the game. You know, a little bit different to Warren Gatland. They don't quite want to play the Warren ball of exhaust in space. You know, they're, they're trying to play more of a zonal attack where players get off the ground, they move back into position, they keep their width. And it is going to take a little bit of time and you have to give him a little bit of time. You know, this is his first year and his fourth game, really, if you include the Barbars game, in charge.
Well, England have come here with a 6-2 split today. Willie Hines and Henry Slade, the three-quarter replacements. Well, it's interesting to see because the reaction of Johnny May suggested that he had taken a knock north of the shoulder line, if you know what I mean. But we have had it confirmed there is no need for a head injury assessment. Bigger. The cross kick meant there for Liam Williams. Well, Elliot Daly got a hand to it. I think Elliot Daly did quite well there. You know, all the momentum is with the player running forward and Liam Williams, both very good aerially. And you can see there, you know, Liam Williams is just trying to pluck that out of the air. If he catches that, then the try line's in front of him, but... You know, Elliot Daly there, very brave, had to get off the ground and does enough. Well, certainly throughout the World Cup, the one or two question marks about Elliot Daly in the air. Perhaps not all those questions have been answered, but he's done enough to get the 15 jersey back. And when George Furbank deemed to be fit, he's managed to keep hold of it. There goes Tompkins, he's got through two tackles. Here's Williams. Ross Moriarty. Williams. Well, this is encouraging for Wales. That was Hadley Parks running hard and straight. Oh, another powerful surge. And this time, right up to the line. Well, Courtney Laws has emerged with the ball. Yeah, someone's not happy about. We're not sure what at the moment. Looks like Alan Wynne Jones and Mara Toji there. Just exchanging a few words. Two quality players. We know each other very well. Oh, he's still carrying on there with Ross Moriarty, who's actually being pulled back by Mara Toji. Now, those two know one another very well. And you've Marrow got Joe Marler there, haven't you? Looking the most innocent bloke ever. You just know he's done something there. He said something or aggravated someone in some way. It's in him. He can't help it. Let's listen in, shall we? Well, there we go. Apparently, it's rather a delayed reaction, but Johnny May has been told to go off for a head injury assessment. So on comes Henry Slade. So there's a little bit of a rejig here. We're just want, all wondering what we're looking at. Hopefully we'll see what started. Wouldn't necessarily call it a fight, but a lot of pushing. Ah, you can see George North there. Just gets the ball knocked on. Well, it was Owen Farrell, and it's going to be a penalty against England, but certainly it was sparked by the reaction there of Owen Farrell. Watch this. Watch now on North. Fairly innocuous, but it does set things off. Yeah, it does, but, you know, he's, he's given him a little push there. It's nothing. It's annoying more than anything. And that's what happens, especially coming from Owen Farrell. So you can see why.
first line from Ben O'Keefe. We've had a really good game up till now. We've been playing seven minutes. Very well explained that from Ben O'Keefe. Very soft penalty to give away. But you can sort of understand why he's given it. He wants to set the tone early. You know, this is England v Wales. Emotions, tempers, aggression are all at an extended level. Oh, this is an interesting call. Lee Halfpenny will have the kicking tee. And I strongly suspect that that is as a consequence of one or two concerns about Dan Bigger's right leg. He has apparently been kicking and training this week, but I guess when you have an option like Lee Halfpenny around, it's not a difficult one to take. No, it's the benefit of having two world-class kickers in your squad. And, you know, I think sensible decision by Wales. You know, they were probably guilty of not taking the points two weeks ago against France when they were on offer. And it's about keeping that scoreboard ticking, taking a little bit of sting out of this powerful England start. Ninth cap today for Lee Halfpenny. He opens the Wales account. It's seven points to three. Wales needed that. They needed just to cool things down a little bit. They stop this England momentum. And now the important thing is gathering this kickoff and trying to exit their own half. Well, Eddie Jones will want to have. Johnny May back if he possibly can because he's been forced into a rejig that is not ideal. Henry Slade is, it appears, moving to full back. Elliot Daly will go to the wing. There's Thomas Williams. There's Henry Slade, comfortable under his first high ball. The Richter scale, I think, uh, or at least the needle on it, just wobbled a little bit there with Manutuilangi. A test of this time on Lee Halfpenny. I think Anthony Watson might have slightly misjudged that. Went up just a little bit early. Ten minutes gone at Twickenham. England leading by seven points to three. Hadley Parks getting no change at all out of Tom Curry. Well, that's what happens when he went straight into it. One of the best tacklers there is in rugby. Well, Alan Wynne Jones and Tom Curry just renewing their personal rivalry there. Here's Slade onto that preferred left foot. Farrell's after it, giving Dan Bigger a bit of a shove in the back. Here's Manitoulangi. Well, that was well dealt with by Nick Tompkins. There are some massive hits going in. Huge hits. Really good kick there, I think, from Slade. Thomas Williams has a little bit of time, just juggles it. I mean, you know, you can't do that. Should that have been a penalty? Yeah, I think it should have, and possibly we might see that if Bernard Keefe decides to look up the big screen. But, you know, you can't push a player out who's retreating, push him on the floor. But Thomas Williams there was just nailed by Otoji. And that's the danger when you're taking high balls, is just to take your eyes off, just have a little quick glance to see who's coming. You don't need to be doing that. So, Ben Youngs. That was Farrell. Another powerful carry from Manitoulangi. We saw how effective he was in the early exchanges against Ireland. That was Curry. Here's Youngs. Slade tries to thread it through with his right foot. Justin Tipperick, the first to react there. Here's Alan Wynne Jones. There's Jake Ball, 
the lesser known Welsh log forward. Wales have settled down pretty nicely, haven't they? Haven't they after that early setback? Yeah, they needed to, just needed to get a bit of possession, a bit of territory, clear the ball, kick the ball on their own terms, and get into a little bit of structure. Long I'll wait for that one for Dan Bigger. Well, he was looking for the torpedo, and he ended up just slicing off the outside of the foot. You know, that's the downside of the spiral, isn't it? You have the tendency just to slice it. And that's not too bad. He's got a little bit of distance on that, but it should have been a lot further. It's Oji, majestic in the line-out. Tulangi again. Very much the default option. Fort on there to Farrell. Here's Slade. Joe Marla, Makavuna Pola, sent home after his return from Tonga. Arm is out there from Ben O'Keefe, so there's a penalty advantage. Very interesting about uh, Makavuna Pola. Apparently the reason why he was sent back home, although he did go directly to Saracens instead, was because on his way back from Tonga, he had a stopover on his trip in Hong Kong, which is uh, a risk the England squad weren't prepared to take. This is the penalty that was given away. I mean, you can see Alan Wynne-Jones, right? He's trying to get away, but the new directive here is that you have to roll either left or right. You cannot be rolling backwards into the line of the scrum halves. You know, they want to try and create quick ball. Everyone wants to see a fast-paced game. I mean, you know what you're doing in those situations. Sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes I guess you do just get wedged in and you can't move. And sometimes you can do nothing about it whatsoever. So it's a ritual all of his own for Owen Farrell. He's looking at a spot somewhere in the south stand. Perfectly struck. England into double figures. Just took it a little bit more time over that one, Owen Farrell. The importance of the kick. Difficult angle, quite far out, but a lovely strike. Now, Dan Bigger needs to put this ball either high in the air, give something for his forwards to chase. The last couple have been a little bit too long. There goes Tom Curry, being met by Josh Navidi. One or two England chasers there very quickly out of the blocks. One of them was Elliot Daly, but Lee Halfpenny stood up strong. Bigger inside ball to Ken Owens. Owens, one of the survivors of the last time Wales won here in the Six Nations. That was back in 2012. Slade, that was very neat to the try scorer Watson. Alan Wynne Jones through very quickly there. Jake Ball providing the support. Farrell. Ford wasn't given too much time there. Here's half penny. One Leicester teammate to another. There's the former Saracen. Now with Scarlets. That's Liam Williams. Here goes Bigger. He's met by Farrell. Jake Ball. A little bit of space there for the lock forward. Little chip over the top there from Bigger, but it's well covered. Mark Wilson was back. 
Mark Wilson's only had one start so far for his club sale since undergoing surgery after the World Cup. Slade. Slade being cut down by Parks. Well, Henry Slade got himself into a bit of a pickle there. Penalised for holding on. George North, not often in those positions of Jacqueline. But because he's 16 and a half, pushing on 17 stone, if you do get him in that position, really hard to stop. But decent tackle there by Hadley Parks. Gets his man down early. And it's hard to move big men like that when they get their head over the ball with a firm base. You've got to be running in with power. But you can just see now Wales just taking their time, taking their time for this lineup. Very important moment. Need to come away with something now. They got in just inside England's 22. And great to have Liam Williams back as well. So dangerous at counter-attack, and somebody tries to score from turnover ball, from kick receipts. Well, we are trying to get some news on the fate of Johnny May. He's been away for quite a while now. Here's Thomas Williams. Here goes Lee Halfpenny. We are just being told that Johnny May will not be returning, so he's failed his head injury assessment. That looked a little bit high on Navidi. Referee playing a penalty advantage here to Wales. The infringement, by the way, is uh, not for that high tackle. It's offside at the line-out. In fact, they have now added the high tackle to it. That well, is... it's straight in front, Tom. Take the three, don't you? Yeah, you have to take the three. Slightly high there. That is high, that was given, but it was offside, that was given first. And that's what you get when you're a, a blitzing team, when you blitz off the line fast, sometimes you just mistime it wrong. But there can only be one decision now. Penalty in front of the post. I think Wayne Pivak will be a little bit heartened by what's happened in the last 15 minutes. Definitely. They bounced back pretty well, haven't they? Yeah, hugely, especially after the big start. And the try that Anthony Watson scored early doors. Wales have managed to climb themselves back into this game. With possession, with territory. You may have noticed today that Wales are wearing black armbands. That follows the very sad news that was uh, announced earlier today. Matthew J. Watkins, former Wales international, played 18 times for his country, who had been uh, battling very bravely against cancer since uh, 2013, not long after his retirement. Well, he has sadly died. And I know, Tom, he's, uh, he's an old teammate of yours, played in the Six Nations with him. Yeah. You know, Matthew J was a was a wonderful, wonderful player, but you know, an even better bloke. Uh, and just terrible, sad news, you know, that we heard this morning. You know, leaves a wife and kids, and you know, all our thoughts as players, as fans, as public, are with his family right now. You know, taken so young at the age of 41. Perhaps rather sad events, which give almost additional motivation to the 23 men in red today. Here's Slade. There's Bigger. On there to Thomas Williams. That looked perhaps, uh, dare I say, lateral. That's a euphemism for forward. Anyway, the referee let it go. Watson. Long wait for Lee Halfpenny. There's Rob Evans on there to Tipperick. 
to brick another of those who were in the Wales team that won here eight years ago. Halloween Jones there, by the way, playing against England, would you believe, for the 21st time. He's won twice here in the Six Nations. First time in 2008, and then in that team in 2012. And there's Thomas Williams, taken by Watson. George Ford having to reach high, just caught a Welsh finger as it came through. Great step, both of them off that suspect right knee. Perhaps it's not so suspect after all. Here's Ken Owens. I know if, if you're Welsh and you're a Welsh fan, you're worried about Dan Bigger's knee. It seems pretty good at the moment, doesn't it? Taking contact plenty of times, high balls. I think we'll see. I think we'll see him last 80. Another huge kick from Henley Slade. He really, uh, he's got a terrific timing. There is Bigger. George Ford. Lee Halfpenny, very happy to put his own name on that. This is Dylan Lewis. Ten points to six. We're through the opening quarter. The kick pass from Bigger. That's meant for Tipperick. Once again, it landed on a sixpence. Following up, there was North. That was well conceived, well executed by Wales. Here's Wynne Jones. Half volley there to Hadley Parks. He tries the same trick. Just overdid it a little bit, but we're going to come back for the penalty. Well, Wales are testing England here. It certainly has the new Wayne Pivak stamp on it. Yeah, they've used that tactic three or four times now. The crossfield kick. Tipperick does so well just to ride that tackle and able to offload the ball to a great support and angle from George North. That gets him on the front foot. And we talked about penalties, about rolling away. This is where you can't really do anything. You get caught. You know, as a, as a player with a ball, you're pushing the ball against a defender like Owen Farrell. He's stuck in there. Nothing else the ref can do apart from give a penalty away. Unfortunate, but that's just the way it goes. That's just the laws. And now Wales get some more field position inside England's 22. They looked really good last time they were in here with three or four strike power runners. I expect we'll see the same. That penalty count illustrating how much pressure the men in red are applying. That's a fourth England penalty. Here's Navidi. Oh. Well, Hadley Perks. That was in the unforced error category. Completely unforced as well. You know, everything was clean about that clean line out take maybe you could argue the pass was a little bit high when you're running those flat angles those hard angles you need it in your chest yeah it certainly wasn't the most sympathetic although I suppose when you get paid the big, big bucks but also very frustrating you know for Wales fans for the management because that was key attacking opportunity no problem that time with the mitts of Hadley Parks Tipperick. Wales playing with speed here. That's Liam Williams. Remember, playing his first game here of any kind since leaving the World Cup at the quarter-final stage. Tompkins, that was. There's Parks. Not the best pass on to Moriarty. George North thought he saw a little shaft of light. Navidi. The video certainly provides additional mobility to Toby Palatow. Perhaps not quite the same power factor. Williams, bigger. Tompkins just realised there that Tuolangi had gone himself between Tompkins and the next attacker. There's some space here. That's a probing kick. Cross comes bigger. Created a nice angle for himself, though, the fly half. Ben Young's on to Henry Slade. Chance to consider the options. 
Well, that was a tremendous kick. That is quality from Henry Slade there. Looked up at a really small angle, but then just switches off for their quick throw-in. England was slow. You maybe get a sense if you had Johnny May out there. That would have been his first instinct. I think he was admiring his wonderful kick there that was absolutely inch perfect. Didn't quite see that sneaky throw in. Just allows Wales just to be able to clear their lines with not too much pressure. Here's Daly. The back row all over them though, Moriarty and Tipperick. Forward up there into the grey winter skies. And Halfpenny's put one down. Don't often see that. Hope he's all right. Bit of traffic really in his way. Quite congested there. Probably the bravest man in the Welsh squad at taking those balls. You can see slightly disappointed with yourself, but we're seeing a lot of kicking at the moment because there's just not a lot of space out there. Defences are on top. When England, when Wales are looking up, you know, they're not seeing any mismatches. You know, you don't really want to play high-risk rugby. You put the ball up. If the kick is good, the challenge in the air is good, then often it's a 50-50 as to whether you get the ball back. Well, Wales suffered an early setback, but they've more than fought their way back into this contest. What are Wales doing right, or what have they done right in the last 20 minutes to address that problem? Let's take a look here at the uh, the power game, and those are all favourable numbers for Wales. Yeah, I think they've been mixing up the game really well with the crossfield kicks. Um, we've seen in the England 22, you know, they have been hitting some good angles. They've been playing with quick ball. When Wales play with quick ball, they look far more dangerous. The toughest thing is getting a quick ball against an unbelievable pack like England have. But Wales are managing to do that, and when they do it, they look good. George North is very active as well, more active than I've seen him for a long time. Looking for work, carrying big. That's exactly what we want to see from him, because he's one of Wales' best players on the day. But it's an intense game, and it's about keeping this intensity for 80 minutes. You know, the collisions are absolutely massive at the moment. We can hear them up here. You can hear them on the TV. Not a great look there from Rob Evans. Get that top down pretty quick. But they're looking good in the scrum as well. You know, England are renowned for having a good scrum. At the moment, Wales are getting parity there. Wynne Jones suffering with the hip injury. That played a part in giving Rob Evans a chance to reassert his claim to the one jersey for so long of course the automatic selection of Warren Gatlin but he dropped him after the Six Nations last year and look at again at that power from the English pack away goes Curry referees playing a penalty advantage to the men in white Ford there's some space out wide here oh. well Elliot Daly if the bounce had been more favourable. Just as I talked about Wales getting a bit of parity at the scrum, one huge effort from England with penalty advantage there. That kick is very close to being a dream kick. You can see Elliot Daly giving the thumbs up. Because Wales are defending very tight off scrums, there is space there. And when the kick is really low and flat there, the ball isn't in the air for a long time. So the 15, so Lee Halfpenny can't get across. So if that ball is just probably a metre or so behind, it goes straight into Elliot Daly's hands and near enough a run-in. Yeah, I guess the problem with it, to use a bit of cricketing parlance, it was pretty much on the perfect length. Daly didn't know whether to go forward or back. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that in-between. So here's Jamie George. Once again... The pathway to Itoji is smooth. George has the ball, but it's been well defended by Wales. There goes Young. It's been a little shaft of light. That was a high tackle from Owens. So England have a penalty advantage. They want to make more of it, though. 
It is a free hit for the men in white. There's Youngs again. Swings it out wide. The space. And Daly goes into the corner. And England have their second try. Really well worked try there from England. Penalty advantage. Just allows you to try something new, have a go. It doesn't matter because you've got a penalty back in front of the post. But this is where it all comes from. Ben Youngs, he's got two or three runners. No one knows who to take. Ken Owens goes high there. That gives England the penalty advantage. And if you're looking at short in a defensive line, this is the way to do it. It's that ball there that gets George Ford on the outside of George North, sucks in Lee Halfpenny. And Elliot Daly has a run in. Really well worked, not much space, but just the, uh, uh, the decoys, the angles, shortens up that Welsh defence, and it ends up being simple hands to Elliot Daly. So a little bit of daylight for England. But it's a wonderful fade away from George Ford. It gets him on the outside of George North which just creates that little bit of space. Just that half a metre, that's all you need just to attract in a player on the outside. 786 caps in this England starting 15. That's a record for England at least. Though it is worth noting, they still have fewer than Wales. They've got 839 out there and look at that. That's gun barrel straight. England up to 17. Gets himself nice and low, plenty of pace, but this is it. You can see George Ford there. Just a little outside break, a perfect pass to him, allows him to take that outside angle. Crucial for Wales to dig in here. Six minutes to go to half-time. What England doing really well as well is just stopping George North getting to that ball, a lot of blockers in place. So England are allowed to catch that cleanly. I mean, that kick, that kickoff is designed for your winger, George North, to just hammer Tom Curry, whoever catches it. But England being really coy there, just putting so many bodies in the way. <laughs> what do you make of... Uh... Tom Curry at eight. The very fact that with an option here, perhaps Wilson would have preferred to play eight. There he is immediately getting the ball. It, it's perhaps hints from Eddie Jones that maybe he does see Curry as his long-term option. Anyway, let's just focus on this for a couple of moments. Here's Hadley Parks being held up there by the England number eight, Curry. Navidi. Alan Wynne Jones looking to get it away. The outside runners had rather overcommitted themselves. Rob Evans with the inside ball to his front row partner, Dylan Lewis, and it's there. Turned over by Marua Toji. Here's George Ford. Slade may not have been intentional, but it really worked. And then Hadley Parks went fairly high on Manitou Alangi. Seems slightly an orthodox tackle there from Parks, but got him down. Change of direction from Ford, but we will come back for a penalty. Yes, it is that, uh, as you called it, an orthodox uh, effort from Hadley Parks. Look, if there's a textbook on how to tackle Manu Tulangi, I want to read it. Yeah, it goes high. I mean, quite lucky there, I think, that Ben O'Keefe isn't having a look at the replay. Makes no real attempt to get low, but... You know, I don't know where it's harder to tackle Manu Lange around the legs or around the hips, because he's just, he's a breeze block. One or two concerns for Wayne Pivak. You could see uh, Dylan Lewis down getting some treatment. Well, there is uh, Manu Lange. I guess he maybe did spring a leak from that challenge. Yeah, it looked like there was certain head on head collision there. 
but Manu Tuolangi's head, his face, just shows you how intense this match is. There you go. I mean, I, I do think Hadley Parks is quite lucky there. It's a brutal carry by Tuolangi. He loves it. He wants more. Three carries, 31 metres so far today. If stats are your thing, I suspect that will impress. That's very good. You know, averaging around 10 metres per carry. It's exactly what you want from your 13. You know, we, we talk about Tom Curry, what is his best position? Six, seven, eight, I don't think it matters. You know, Eddie Jones is clearly trying to turn him into a number eight. You know, there's some quality number eights in the English league, but obviously Eddie Jones doesn't rate them as much as Tom Curry. You know, you play wherever. You probably chuck them at 12, he'll do a decent job. That was the back of John Mitchell's head we could see there. Joe Marler just, uh, I think, confirming the call with Jamie George. George Cruz snapping that out of the grey skies. There's Tulangi again. Here's Youngs. Well, away goes Moriarty, but the referee said that he was playing an advantage. Wales pulling down the mall. Let's have a look. George Cruz takes it. That's Ross Moriarty. Goes straight to ground. Forces England to drive over him. Subsequently go to ground. I think pitch, uh, picked up there. I think from the assistant referee. Yes, Ross Moriarty. Those of a certain age will remember his father, Paul, who was uh, certainly cut from the same cloth. But um, those perhaps whose memories are reasonable, but not quite as long as that, will remember Ross Moriarty wearing white and winning a world junior title in the same team as Nick, Nick Tompkins, both of them playing for England in 2014. And their captain that day... Maruatoji. It's an aggressive, violent cloth. If he's cut from it, he's not cut from silk. He's exactly like his father. But you want that on your team, you need that on your team. Just got to control it. So England up to 20 points. One or two alarm bells starting to ring for Wales here. Yeah, I think so. England started the game so positively, so quickly. They're also ending this half as well. At one stage, Wales claw themselves right back into it. 14 points at the moment. There's still a minute left for Wales to come away with something, if they can. Again, they're just giving Tom Curry too much time on the ball. Here's Ben Youngs. They'll go through the copy book exit. George Ford hoofs it up the close to halfway. Good kick from the Leicester Tiger. Yeah, very good kick. Relieves a lot of pressure there. You're talking potentially 14 points going in at half time. Not ideal, but Wales will know they can come back from that. They come back from that last year against France. And also, let's not forget Scotland here last year in the Six Nations. Navidi. Last 20 seconds of the half. Look there at Atoji. He was off his feet though. Moriarty, quick hands on. Not sure it went forward there, but Ben O'Keefe says it did. Quality, quality there from Andy Watson. Read that really well. Came in with a splop 
uh, spot blitz. He has to take man and ball here. If he doesn't take man and ball, or at least get himself in the way in the passing channel, you know, Wales are going down that touchline. Yeah, that's the one that went forward from Nick Tompkins. It uh, went off the shin of Lee Halfpenny, but Benner keep absolutely spot on. That's what quality wingers do. They watch the ball coming across the line. And then when they feel the moment is right, they pounce. And he just gave Nick Tompkins there no time. Panicked under pressure, threw the ball forward. And England get the put in. I mean, there's only one place this is really going, isn't it? In the channel, out the touch, half-time, have an orange. Yes, Tom, I think you can uh, be excused to put on the kettle now. Well, the problems out of the control of uh, the Six Nations Committee mean that the championship will not necessarily be decided next weekend. But one thing England do here, not just applying pressure on Wales, but sending a message up to Scotland where France will be, I'm sure, watching this and preparing for their match tomorrow afternoon against Scotland. It's a shame there's no penalties for feeding anymore. That was put in by Maratoji's feet. Well, it's not going directly into touch to Alangi. Oh, there's a chance perhaps for Wales here. Well, that was sloppy from England. Here's Parks. There goes Moriarty again. Williams. Tompkins. Look how quickly the England defence is up there. There's Bigger. Dylan Lewis there out to Tompkins, here goes Hadley Parks, the inside ball. Liam Williams being easily picked off. Well, we've got a high tackle, it's going back 30 seconds or so. Close, uh, well, it's that one out there. Well, actually, I thought it was a bit uh, close to the middle. It is indeed. It was that high shot from Maru Itoji. Here you go, it's on Dan Bigger. I look up, you know, arm makes contact with his head. You know, that has to be really a penalty. It's a, again, it's, it's slightly soft, but unfortunately that is, that's the way the game is played now. But as we thought England were just going to boot that ball off, going with a 14-point lead, it gives Wales a chance now just to get three more points on the board. So you'd, you'd be kicking yourself, really. You know, if you're an English player, English management, just gives Wales a slight chance. But you can also see, you can also see with the English defence, there is space out there wide for Wales. You know, they're throwing a lot of decoys in, but they're not able to get the ball back because England's blitz defence on the outside is coming up so fast that if you want to throw that ball, you know, you're in danger of intercept territory. Well, this is the clearest evidence yet that Dan Bigger is feeling no ill effects at all from that knee. Lee Halfpenny has stuck two over. But he's reasserted his authority when it comes to having first dibs at the kicking. So England have gifted Wales three points. It does slightly change the complexion, but England certainly in control. Two tries in that first 40. They lead Wales by 20 points to nine. Wales have made a change coming into the second half. Dylan Lewis, who we saw take a knock during the first half, he's been replaced by Leon Brown, who will earn his 10th cap. The Dragon. Well, England handed a rather convenient gift as far as Wales were concerned, right on the stroke of half-time. But I guess 
Wales will feel the next 10 minutes, they've got to make some sort of impression. Yeah, look, you can, you can admire England for trying to play positive rugby at the end of that first half, but, you know, sometimes you can overthink things. You know, you'd be far happier in the England camp with a 14-point lead rather than an 11-point lead. So, we're all set to go. The second 40 minutes, George Ford. England certainly not out of this championship. They will turn the screw just a little bit on France. There's Tompkins. Good little step. Space here for Josh Navidi. Tompkins wants it back. He's got it back. Look at this. Thomas Williams tippering to his left. What a start to the half from Wales. That is outstanding. Justin Tipperick. That is just the boost that Wayne Pivak will have been looking for. It is one of the tries of the year. Get out of your seat. Get on your feet. Look at that little step from Tomkins. Stays alive on the inside. Josh Navidi back inside. Look at that support line. And then Justin Tipperick. Well, there's a man that you want on the end of that try. Plenty of pace. What a start for Wales. You always talk about coming out and starting big. You cannot get bigger than that. And that all comes from Tompkins, who absolutely gets hammered after. But huge support play there from Thomas Williams and Justin Tipperick. Talk about getting yourself back in the game straight away. Unbelievable try. Well, the last minute of the first half and the first minute of the second have been a disaster for England. Incredible. All from the kickoff as well. Not a great chase from England. Tompkins managed, I think, to slip out the tackle of Elliot Daly. And then it's just support runners communication and pace. England just weren't awake. Look how happy that Welsh management are. Ross Moriarty. Right, this is game on now. Can they do it again? Well, we've seen surely the try of the championship. Can Wales now make something of it? England will have to be on their mettle. You talk about momentum swings, getting your confidence back. That is a huge momentum change, massive for confidence now from this Welsh team. Williams hoists it. It goes through the grass there of Henry Slade. Manitoua Lange does the mopping up for the men in white. The carry from Carl Sinclair. Remember how Warren Gatlin got under his skin before the match and Alan Wynne-Jones under it during it in Wales last year. Here's Dan Bigger and Bigger's away and running. An important little tap there from Marowatoji. Well, the first half was high-octane stuff. We're running out of superlatives for the first three minutes to this half. There's Tom Kintz, who can see he's starting to feel like a Welshman after 20 odd years being English through and through. He certainly played his part there, but Wales have conceded a penalty, and that is a little bit clumsy. England really needed that. Corny Laws, Jackal over the ball, held on, and Wales sort of slightly start to run themselves into a little bit of trouble. It was an inside ball, and look at him. Such long levers, supporting all his weight, looking at the referee. God, England really needed that. Because twice, Wales have managed to slip out of a kick from England. You know, the first line of chasing from England didn't quite get the ball. There was no second line, and that just allowed Wales twice to get on the front foot. Huge, huge penalty in terms of momentum for England there. Well, we're celebrating today Ben Young's 99th cap for England. He's not the longest standing England international, though, involved today. That, would you believe, is Courtney Laws. When Young's made his debut in the Calcutta Cup at Murrayfield, and that is just, or was just, six days short of a decade ago, Courtney Laws was actually earning his second cap for England. 
certainly demonstrated all the experience and the wisdom. An opportunity, and not a difficult one here, for Owen Farrell to stop the bleeding. England's advantage is back to seven points. And it looks very simple up here and on TV, pretty straight quick, but when the pressure's on you to nail them like that and just give themselves a little bit of breathing space once again because, you know, these opening five minutes have all been whales. Look at George North after that. Bit of protection there was for Tom Curry. What a 35 minutes it's going to be. Reese Webb is uh, stripped off, ready to come on. He will replace Thomas Williams when he does. Here he is, wearing 21, the change being made. Massive opportunity for this guy, Reese Webb, bags of experience. Hasn't really featured for Wales because of his move to Toulon, got a point to prove. Yeah, certainly a period of hiatus in his career. He made his debut for Bath last week. There's a little grubber through from Liam Williams. Slade. Look left, look right. Falls on the ground. Retains possession, though, for the men in white. Here's Joe Marler. Here's Bigger. Looks up. Takes a spot. I'm not sure he found it. Henry Slade barely had to move a muscle. That's a good kick from Slade. Set up nicely, though, for Halfpenny. Halfpenny goes in field. Comfortable take for Elliot Daly. A sensible kick that just finds space. Well, Bigger wanted that to roll. Well, a chance to counter here for Farrell. The exchange of kicks certainly working well for England. Here's Slade. Look at George North holding on to him, but he's got to ground. The carry there from Marla. Sinclair with a little step. Back there to Farrell. Just outside the Wales 22. Jamie George that time, straight into Tipperick. Marla getting that at the standstill. I don't think he was expecting it necessarily. Courtney Laws. Ben Young's inside there to Sinclair. This is good stuff from England. Well, that rather put the mockers on them, didn't it? Referee playing a knock-on advantage. If Liam Williams could have got that ball to boot, there's plenty of space. That's Reese Webb with a little poke over the top. We'll come back, I think, for the uh, knock-on advantage. Well, normally when you kick the ball, it's, it's given. Ben O'Keefe there played an extended advantage. And normally it's called over as soon as that ball leaves the boot. But luckily for Wales, it's called back, gains them some position, but also gives them a chance to clear their lines. But, you know, all this pressure came from that Elliot Daly kick right down the middle. And because it was under the posts, it just makes... You know, if Dan Bigger really wants to get a good touch find, it's a massive kick. He doesn't quite get enough on it. And that gets England back on the front foot from Owen Farrell bulldozing the ball back. But this centre field, near enough centre field set up now. Two kickers either side. 
depending on which way the scrum goes, you're normally in this situation, you kick from source if the set piece is good. But Leon Brown on now, great potential. Very attacking prop as well, very good ball in hand. Elusive, powerful, he's got a turn of speed as well. Well, England getting the penalty. Digging deep and finding a special effort. Well, big George Cruz there, who may well be playing his last test match here at Twickenham. May well prove to be his last of all, because he's, we believe, on his way to play club rugby in Japan next season. And quite a big call there from Ben O'Keefe. You know, often those scrums are just reset because they go down. It's difficult to see there who was infringing. They could say really neither team pushed forward, it just sort of crabbed to the right and went down. But that's the referee's interpretation. He knows more about it. Joe Marler getting the majority of the plaudits. A man in his second career for England. Remember, he retired from Test Rugby, saying he didn't enjoy playing for England. Well, like many things, you don't know how much you miss them until you are without them. So, George Ford doing the kicking. We did see Owen Farrell getting a bit of treatment. It sounds as if he's taken a blow to the thigh, so a bit of a dead leg. No slowing down of the service, though. George Ford filling in immaculately. No problems there for George Ford. Also, the penalty count is sort of evening out now. Wales let themselves down by ill discipline. Well, that deficit has crept up to 10 now for Wales. They need something. It's been a decent 10 minutes for England. Daly's after it. Well, it's gone in, gone into touch on the full. Now, Reese Webb was looking for the quick one. Two things finest playing the innocent there. Carl Sinclair, what have I done, he says. Bit of amateur dramatics there. But, you know, this game is in danger of moving away from Wales unless they get themselves back into it now. Ten points is, is quite a decent lead. They need to come away with something now. There's Navidi. The carry from Parks. They've gone inside the England 22. Here goes Webb. Once again, that England defence so quickly up. You know, England just able to slow down that first carry from Parks, which just gives them a little bit more time and space to spread the field and get their defensive line set up. Well, the Wales runners, not so much being halted, is driven back. There's another example. Tompkins, though, is back for more. Here's Reese Webb. Wales just trying to create some momentum. There's someone who can do it, George Ford, or should I say, uh, George North. Oh, and it's been taken by Cruz. Cruz with a kick ahead. Ben Youngs is after it. Sits up nicely for half penny. Great read there from Cruz, wasn't it? The steal that intercept. If you're critical, he should have kept hold of that. Recycled the ball, but there's something with forwards in open space that they just 
They have to kick the ball. They just have to. The clearing kick from Reese Webb. Doesn't quite find touch. Here's Henry Slade. Sinclair waiting on this side. George Ford has run to the open side. That's meant for Elliot Daly, but it was well read by Reese Webb. Here goes Liam Williams. Good first time tackle coming in from England, though. You can hear the encouragement there for George Cruz. Navidi with the tackle on Slade. Good hands there from Sinclair. Two grabs taken by Curry. They've still got it though of England. Tulangi with some space. Oh, Watson with a spill. Referee says it's gone backwards. Watson's after it. There wasn't a name on it. Half penny. Recovered well for Wales. Jake Ball, we're told, is uh, struggling with a shoulder injury. He will be replaced shortly. Aaron Shingler stripped off and ready to go. Approaching the end of the third quarter of the match. Wales will feel they have to be the next team to score. Farrell firing that hard into the ground. Sits up nicely though for Bigger. That was a booming kick. Good positioning from Ford. Here's Jamie George. He's been met by Leon Brown. Well, it really is lung-bursting stuff, and there's a chance here. Oh, and the referee just seeing the knock-on in the tackle. Very long passage of play there. Be some tired bodies. The hand was involved in the tackle there. That's why the ball came loose. It doesn't look good, does it, for Jake Ball, who's coming off, I think. But there it is. You can see Alan Wynne Jones' hand connects with the ball. You may well have heard the voice there of the television match official. That is Marius Juncker from South Africa, just confirming the knock-on from Alan Wynne Jones. So changes being made on both sides. Rob Evans is going off. Rhys Carre, the Saracen, is on. Jake Ball, I must say, looks rather like a, a dislocation, perhaps, of a shoulder there for Jake Ball. Toby Falatau, or Tolupi Falatau, I should say, is off the bench. He's on as well. Luke Cowan Dickey comes on for Jamie George. So, as George Cruz leaves, perhaps, for the last time. Time. Eddie Jones was certainly keen to play down the significance of individuals today and landmarks like that, but I think the significance of the moment not lost there on the Saracen. Had a very good shift today, both of those boys. A couple of Saracens off there, Jamie George on the left who were told had been in uh, touch with Nick Tompkins during the week. The two Saracens teammates playing on opposite sides. No tactics apparently discussed. Tompkins just needed to find out how Jamie Dog, Jamie George's dog was. Yeah. How's the dog? By the way, <laughs> what, what's your game plan? <laughs> uh, Believe, look, look believe the, it if you will. Yeah, look at the subs that have come on and some quality players that have come on now. 
Look at Daly scampering after it. The ball just beaten. Kick to nothing, really. Kick at space wasn't really in the right position for Daly to catch. But, you know, with 10 points behind, bringing Toby Falatau on, you know, he is world-class. Need him hands on ball as much as possible in the wide channels with Aaron Shingler, two real mobile forwards. And there's no point having them on unless you're going to play some high-tempo, wide rugby. Webb kicks it infield. Comfortable catch for Daly. Back to Slade. He's had some good moments since coming off the bench. Looked really good at 15, really slick. Here's Ben Youngs. The offload. England are really flying here. Watson. Well, he had Manitou Alangi to his right. Here's Launchbury. England preparing to go in for the kill. Was that tackle a little high on Courtney Laws? There's Ford to Alangi. Cow and Dickey. Four metres to go for the men in white. Here's Sinclair. Leon Brown making the tackle, if that's what it was. He might have hurt himself. He's still down, is Brown. Appears to have hurt his shoulder. There's Courtney Laws. Youngs, Cowan Dickey wants it. He's got it, has the extra chief. Twickenham has found its voice. John Mitchell talked during the week about how this place is like a coliseum. Well, England certainly going in for the kill here. Farrell it was on the decoy. There it is for Youngs. Will the damn wall break this time? It does. And he didn't need to burst through it, Manatualangi. In the end, it was a walk-in. Oh, comes from this break from Ben Young. He's had a brilliant game today. Half a gap open, still got the pace to get through. And look at this offload as well. Keeps the point of contact going. Not rushed. Calculated offload and then it's the interlink play. Watson possibly had a chance to put two Lange away on the right hand side. He doesn't, he keeps hold of it. It's a power play, and then look at those hands from Owen Farrell there. Absolutely sublime. Really quick hands. I think George Ford, sorry. Wonderful piece of skill there under a huge amount of pressure. Two Lange gets a try, a well deserved try. He's been epic today. Well, Leicester have been patient with him. So too Eddie Jones. He realises what a valuable cog he is in this English wheel. Owen Farrell. Without a blemish so far. And that pretty much bisects the gap between those uprights. It's the mixture of the play as well from this England team. It's really impressive. You've got the power runners, the short on the defence, and then George Ford. That's incredible. Such soft hands. Knows exactly where Tuolangi is, doesn't even look at him. And puts him away for a try. It looked like Tuolangi was quite happy for that couple of minutes break been very busy all day but he's huge he's huge for England whether you play him at 12 or 13 I think he's better at 13 because of those wider channels being able to use his fend being able to use his step when he's at 12 there's a lot more congested running and he's such a dangerous strike runner well Wales have manpower problems in the front row now Dylan Lewis was replaced because of injury Leon Brown's shoulder is clearly a long way short of 100%. Here he goes, Brown. 
Even feeling his shoulder there on the ground. He's having to fight through the pain. There goes Parks trying to find a way through a gap there. It's been George hard. North coming in off the wing. Yeah, sorry, it's been hard for uh, Wales to penetrate this England defence. They did it off the kickoff at the start of the second half, but every time they look up, there's white shirts in front. Navidi being almost cut in half there by Elliot Daly. Here's Shingler being met by Mark Wilson. Big up. Bit of space there for Tompkins. There wasn't a route through, though, to thread it to his captain. Half penny. George North. Good tackle from Anthony Watson. There's Alan Wynne Jones. Who breaks another record today. This is his 57th appearance in the Six Nations. Moving one ahead of Gethin Jenkins, 56. Bigger. Tompkins. Offloading there to half penny. Wales making slow progress here. But they are being patient. No way through the white wall at the moment. Tipperick. Here goes Liam Williams, the knock-on force by the tackle from Curry, And Wales are going to have to start all over again. Good chase from England as well. Stopping Wales in their tracks, you know, just allowing Wales to, to play off slow ball, which is exactly what you want for England, forcing them to kick. The power of some of these hits, there are some aching Welsh bodies out there at the moment. Owen Farrell looks like he's taken another knock. Well, back goes Reese Webb. I think it's the captain who's on the floor at the moment, Alan Wynne-Jones. Alan Wynne-Jones doesn't stay down unless it's something serious. You know, I hope he's all right. We see him carry the ball now. Well, it was the contact, this one here. Ooh. Well, he's leading with the shoulder, isn't he, Courtney Laws? He is leading with the shoulder. That arm is down as well. That's a position you want to get away from. His arms aren't up. He's not looking to grab. It's whether or not this is seen. I think possibly it might be. And he's down for a long time. Well, Courtney Law's responsible for it. He's off the pitch now. He's been replaced. And that fella Ellis Genge, who uh, proved so decisive his involvement up at Murrayfield on that uh, day when any form of creative rugby really was quite literally blown away. Ellis Genge is huge, a huge carrier, exactly what you want. If you're English, you know, someone, a bruiser, just to come on, who loves carrying, who wants to get you on the front foot. It's a physical game, you want physical players, and he's at the top of the list. Yes, I must say, it's rather concerning looking there at Alan Wynne-Jones. Let's bear in mind he's earning his 138th cap for Wales today. Now, if you chuck in the nine, 
that he's played in the colours of the British and Irish Lions. That takes him up to 147. Oh. Well, he needed or needs another one, which would come next week if he's fit against Scotland to equal the record of Richie McCaw, the world record of 148 test matches. With this, just a little montage of some of the collisions that have happened this afternoon. It's been absolutely huge, and that's the biggest stat for me, is not only the scoreboard, but the 26 dominant tackles that England have made to Wales' is six. That shows you the difference, that shows you who's in control of the breakdown. And when you're making that amount of dominant tackles, you know, you can afford to blitz, you can afford to slow attacking teams down. Just got a glimpse there of Sam Warburton. Now involved with the coaching and preparation of this Wales side, the former Wales captain. Youngs releases daily. Well, yeah, releasing him down a blind alley, nothing on there. Fairly at Daly had George North in front of him. Now England has certainly got to, at some stage, be looking at a bonus point because, look, we, we don't know what's going to happen with the Six Nations, whether the last weekend is going to go ahead or not. We've got to assume that some of the games will. Um, if not, they'll get played um, later on down the line. But England can still win the Six Nations, you know. France has still got two teams. They've got Scotland and Ireland to play. No easy wins there. Liam Williams lasting an hour on his return. He's been replaced by Johnny McNichol. Look at that. Lovely pass from Tompkins. Out to Shingler. Here's Ken Owens. Just caught a glimpse of the touchline. A wonderful ball there by Tompkins. Doesn't die with it, keeps it alive. It was perfect wait for Shingler. Here's Tompkins again. There goes Falatau. Cowan Dickey being told to get back. Tompkins again, that to Tipperick. That was rather clever from the man there with the blue hat on. We're playing a penalty advantage at the moment for Wales. A late tackle from England. It was uh, Charlie Yules hitting the captain. Alan Wynne Jones. There goes George North. Reese Webb. Here's Falatau again. Still a little more than 12 minutes to go. Well, he's been in the wars a bit, as Alan Wynne Jones. He's always in the wars. Look at his face, look at his hair, his ears. He's a warrior, an absolute warrior. Always has been. Ooh, slightly late there to Nick Tompkins. And just on Nick Tompkins, right, the biggest compliment I can give him is that he looks like he's played the game for a long time at international level. You know, he's played really well. You know, bearing in mind, this is what, his third cap. Looks so comfortable in that position and, and being where one of Wales' most attacking players, most elusive carriers, getting himself over the gain line, keeping the ball on the front foot. You know, very comfortable in that position. Yes, he's had nine carries today at an average of about eight metres a time. So that, among other things, illustrates the impact that the Saracen has had on this match. Here's Carre, another penalty advantage in Wales' favour. They need to get something out of this, though, to the men in red. Well, the penalty count is going up for England here. Yeah, but you don't mind that for England because they're just trying to slow Wales down and try and take a little bit of momentum out of them. You're going to infringe, you know, 17 points ahead at the moment. Now you can see Maro Atoji quite clearly jumping across the line. I mean, he gives some penalties away, but boy, does he have some turnovers and key instances in games. You know, you sort of let him, you allow him to have those five penalties, five penalties he's had so far, not including this game. Good tackle count as well today for uh, Toji, 16. But every ruck, you know, he's pestering, his long levers, stopping balls, getting passed out. 
you know, such a nuisance in those areas. So you allow him those little penalties he gives away now and again because what you get on the plus side far outweighs them. Willie Hines is on to earn his 13th cap. Navidi has the ball in there, and again, England have infringed. Here's Reese Webb. Look at George Ford there, looking like a sprinter. The long pass from Bigger. Here's McNichol. Must say, Bigger did so well there. Still playing an advantage here, and then it's knocked on. Well, there has to come a point when the referee has to consider a sanction here for England. Has to be. I think he's looking at it now, possibly maybe one more warning. A cynic might say he's playing for time there, Tom. Yeah, can you say that again, please? Didn't quite hear it. Um, you know, it's he's warned him, he's warned him, but whether or not he needs to warn him, there's been a lot of ill discipline, you know, especially with Wales mounting this attack. You know, desperation now for the Welsh. Need to score, need to get back in this game. Time is running out. but he's given them one more warning. Any penalty now that England give away will be penalised. But it's difficult now, you know, clock slowed down, you're going to have to really go for a scrum. You're going to have to try and back yourself. Well, it is quite brave. We've got Leon Brown, who I'm not sure his shoulder is 100%. England have just brought on Ellis Genge. But it's a centre-field scrum, which is the which is the treat, really, because it allows you to go either way. You know, this is where, as, as backs, you've got calls, depending on which way the scrum turns, left or right. You know, so often we see that set up, a 10 and a 15 behind. You want to get your, your fast men, your dangerous men in the right positions. And it just separates forwards and backs as well. You know, gives you a chance to get a one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what you want as a player. You want to try and isolate defenders. You know, Willie Hines on now. You know, I'm, I'm certainly they'll look at that sort of access. Or the 8-9 channel off the back of scrums. Well, they're taking it quickly, have Wales. There's Reese Webb. Bigger trying to force his way over. Brown driven back. The power there of Atoji and his mates. Shingler standing over it. Ken Owens. Look at Curry there. The pick up there from Carey. Just a metre to go for Wales. Good carry there from Carey. Tipperick. Well, there's another penalty advantage being played here. England are going to go down to 14 men. It'll be for the rest of the match. Wales will feel they have to make this count, though. The cross kick from Bigger. North is waiting for it. But that was dealt with wonderfully well. Henry Slade, well, he came on very early following that head knock for Johnny May, and he's filled in out of position quite superbly. What a game Henry Slade's had. You're right, though, he's come on probably in a less familiar position of 15, but looks so good at the counter-attack. There's Genge being yellow-carded. I mean, England won't worry too much about this. You know, winds down the clock, giving away penalties, winds down a little bit of time. Scrums wind down time. You know, they're not really in danger now of losing this game. They're quite settled. Just given for offside. Not for that little tap on Josh Navidi's head. 
But just talking about Henry Slade again, he just diffuses that crossfield kick, and it's difficult when you're on the bench, when you come off the bench into an unfamiliar position, but he's adapted so well. You know, he's carried the ball back on counter-attack, he's done well in the air. And they've had to shuffle around Elliot Daly to the wing as well. But when you've got a quality player like Daly, who's versatile, he's comfortable in all positions. Well, if Wales are to stand any chance, they have to score from this. Ball boy taking his time there, isn't it? Just winding down the clock a few more seconds. They need three tries. Alan Wynne Jones. There's Navidi. Tipperick pops it up there for Falatel. Reese Webb on there to Shingler. The long pass out, space here for North. Well, North looks like he may, may have even taken a bit of a knock to the head there. Oh, look, I hope he's all right. He's just recovered from an HIA two weeks ago against France. And Aaron Shingler does really well. George Ford does well to hold him up, but he's able to get the ball loose. And that's the ball there from Tompkins, whips it over. Ooh, I'll tell you what, this could be red. This could be red. A good tackle by Slade. That's, that's just a shoulder charge. He's just shoulder charged George North there. No attempt to make a tackle, no arm wrap. But it's whether or not he makes contact with the head. Does it contact the shoulder? Does it connect with George North's head and chin? They're taking their time over this. It's certainly worth another look. I guess the other point they have to investigate is, was North still in a position to score a try? No, I don't think so. This is a very good tackle. And he's just taken a run and charge it in now, but it's, it's where the contact is made as well. Fabulous tackle. Ooh. Fabulous tackle from Henry Slade. But that doesn't look great. The arm is down. Look, I think I think that could be a red card. Oh, that. Well, the first contact is with the head. That's dangerous. That is dangerous. That is a red card. I don't think there's any other option. It's going to be a red card. And that is the main issue there, the arm, the height of the tackle and no arm. Well, the crowd can hear what's coming. Alex Ruiz there, the assistant, just talking to the referee. Well, in fairness to Tuolangi, he appears to have accepted the decision with good grace. Yeah, it does, and it, it puts a bit of a dampener on what has been an amazing game from him. And uh, look, that's nice to see, you know, but 
He's an aggressive player. He tackles aggressively. You sometimes get that with him. The crowd don't like it, but it doesn't matter. It's a clear red. Has to be a red every day of the week. Well, it's too little too late, I suspect, for Wales. But it's 15 against 13. For the last five minutes and a little more. Well, what an effort that is from 13 men in white. Yeah, you can see how happy they are, can't you? High five in bum taps. I think that was Joe Launchbury there, right in the thick of it. The camera's on Mario Toji. Good catch, good setup, but you can see Launchbury there, you can see a Toji there. Both of them just trying to, it's a Toji, isn't it? Uh, Lewis Launchbury gets his hands on the ball. Doesn't allow Wales to go to the ground. And look at those smiles. Means a lot to him. Well, Mano Tuolangi just chatting there to Jamie George. He can expect a period on the sidelines. Ben Earl is on. The Saracen earns his third cap. He replaces Mark Wilson. I see all the tricks in the book now. England down to 13 men. They'll just want to wind this clock down now. You know, we, we might even see a couple of resets now. All the tactics, all the dark arts used now. Joe Marler is back on to ensure we've got three specialist front row players. So Charlie Yules has been sacrificed. Look, there's 15 more seconds, just a little quick reset. The pick up from Curry. Wales desperate to get their hands on the ball. They will get the put in at the scrum. It's a good scrum by England. But when Curry picks that ball up, he's going lateral. And there's a whole heap of red shirts on him. And when you're going lateral, it's difficult to pump your legs and turn your body to go forward. And just got driven back a couple of metres there. So, Carl Sinclair going off as we, as we look there at the Guinness Six Nations player of the match. On the occasion of his 99th test match for England, Ben Youngs. There's the new man on at tight head, that's Bart's Will Stewart. Yeah, ben Youngs so deserves that man of the match. Got England on the front foot, looks so sharp. Half breaks, offloads, keeping that point of contact moving. You know, also his box kicking has been sensational today, really giving his forward something to run at. Nothing more so than the first box kick of the day, where Dan Bigger gets absolutely hammered. There is a certain irony to that. Wales, who have a veritable production line of scrum halves, all sorts of speculation that Wales may even provide all three on the next uh, British and Irish Lions tour. Lots of talk in the newspapers over the course of the last few weeks about how in that respect the cupboard's a little bare for England. Ben Young's showing that there are still a fair few internationals in him. Reese Webb out there to Hadley Parks. There goes Bigger. And Bigger as he got there. It was the long reach of the left arm. Yeah, I mean, you're, something's got to be up if you can't score against 13 men. Well, the referee is going to check it. He's called that time is off. 
Well, Maurice Jonka has given him the thumbs up, so he's going to have to go through that process it's again. A, yeah, it's just the ground in here. All bigger knees there, there's a little bit of an outside hole. We're just having a look at that reach here. Touches a line, try. Yeah, that's the benefit of having two more players than a defending team. Just a little bit of a decoy and a good reach. Two minutes, near enough, 10 points, 11 if you want to win. Well, I fear the clock's going to beat them. Well, can we see a try from the kickoff again, like we did? But look, Wales is going to throw everything into this now. It's difficult to defend with 13 men. He's done wonderfully well with that knee injury. He's not looking entirely comfortable on it. I know the strapping will be fairly heavy, which uh, in itself creates a little bit of a limp. There's Hadley Parks. Come on, England. A losing bonus point. A reasonable target here for Wales. On, there goes Shingler. Navidi. Referee playing an advantage here to Wales. There goes Parks. Picked up there by Tipperick. McNichol. That's Elias, the replacement hooker. Turned over by Curry, but the referee brings play back for the scrum. They're an unforgiving bunch here, aren't they, at Twickenham? Baying for blood. Oh, they should be happy with that, shouldn't they? You know, it's a scrum, it winds down the clock, you've got a minute left, this will be the last phase of play unless there is a penalty, obviously. You know, there's no time left on the clock, this is where you can just relax as a player, really. Not too much, but you know the game's won. You can enjoy it just a little bit. Eddie Jones is off his perch. He doesn't look happy, but I'm sure he is inside because it has been the, it's been the performance we expected from England. You know, the aggressive, dominant tackle performance. Just suffocated Wales with their defence, taking their chances when they needed to. Last 15 seconds of the match. Bigger. Parks. Get him down. Tompkins running and beating defenders again. He's been doing that all afternoon. Tipperick. Half penny. Wales going for this losing bonus point. North. Great step from North. They're inside the 22. Elias. Webb. McNichol didn't have too much time then, did uh, Tompkins. Alan Wynne Jones, basketball style to Parks. Reese Carey runs straight into Willie Hines. Hines did rather well there. It was a bit of a physical mismatch. This England defence having to work extra, extra hard. They've only got 13 men out there. Reese Webb and Tipperick gets his second. Wales will come away with a losing bonus point. Yeah, Tompkins again does well. Bulldozes, I think that's George Ford out of the way. Steps inside. And George North, I think he's played really well today. Looked far more dangerous than I've seen him in a long time. Hungry for the ball in the hand. And then out the cat flap to Tipperick. You know, and Wales have not given up all the way through this game. They've challenged to the end. Yes, it's down to 13 men now, England, but... You just feel that this score, whether Wales get the kick or not, is a, is a true reflection of the game. It's 
It's right out of the middle. Well, in the end, Wales have clawed themselves back to within three of England. Nick Tompkins, the first to praise Bigger. It has been a wonderfully brave effort from Dan Bigger. But in the end, Wales have just fallen short of 13 men England. Final score at Twickenham, England 33, Wales 30.